today we're going to be taking a look at how you can double the amount of control that you have over any DCS module. Quite literally, whether it's a jet fighter, World War II warbird or a helicopter, we're going to take a look at three easy steps you can do right now. It ain't going to cost you a penny on how you can double the amount of controls that you have using your existing HOTAS setup. That's right, you won't need to spend a penny. No downloads, no quirks. What's more, because it's all legit and above board every time there's a new DCS update, you won't have to change a thing. It'll all still be there. If that sounds like it might be impossible, guess what? I found a way and I'm going to share that with you right now. And a little update on the Apache stuff. Adrian, your comment was selected out the first 100. Well done. I know you've already received yours and we're still waiting for news on the second. But for now, we're going to get right into today's video. To address the concerns of the people that say it's impossible, I'm going to say you've probably been doing it for many years and you don't even realise. If we take a look here at my keyboard, got a row of numbers here and we know if we press the shift key down here and then press one of these numbers, we're going to get the symbol instead of the number. So to begin with, let's press escape and come to the adjust control menu. And if we scroll down a little bit here, this is a perfect example here. Look at this. We've got the carb filter here and we see on the keyboard, if we press H, it toggles it on and off. But if we press left control and H, we uh, force it to be off only. If we press left shift and H, we force it to be on. So we're going to do the similar thing with the whole task. Of course, there's going to be people saying, hey, if you have to let go of the whole task to press shift or control just so that you can press another button, then surely that breaks the immersion, right? And I completely agree. So just stick with it. I'm just laying out the principle. So here's my Thrustmaster stick. It's nothing special. It's just the uh, standard one that served me very well for a number of years. And if I bring the uh, camera much closer to it, we see I would hold it like that. There's the trigger. But what I'm going to do is just twist it round that way so that the back of the stick is facing you. You can see there the trigger is looking very worn. But here is a lever on the back of it. And I'm going to use this lever, if you imagine it, as though I'm holding down the shift key on the keyboard. And the reason that I use this lever is because it's very easy to press down and it doesn't obscure any of the other controls. I'm just going to jump in here in post. Doesn't matter if you don't have the same stick or you want to use a different button that I'm using here. Just bearing in mind, you want to pick a button that is comfortable for you to hold down while you then press something else. Just like you would use the shift or the control key on your keyboard, you would hold it down while you were pressing something else. I find this lever a very easy one to do, but use whatever works for you. By pulling this lever here, I'm going to double my controls. So how do we go about setting that up inside the DCS menu? So that's what we're going to go over to right now. So we have a starter button here. In this case, the default is the home button, but we also have a cover, a starter cover, so you can't press it by accident. And in order to open that cover, the default is left shift and home. We want to bind this to the whole task. So the first thing that we could do I'm just going to use the button at the very bottom of my throttle as the whole task for the sake of this tutorial. So I'm going to come over to the throttle on the whole task section where it says starter. I'm just going to double click and press the button. There we go. And in this case, it's picking it up as button 26. OK, all good. Nothing new there. However, what about if I want to also open and close the starter button using the same button on the whole task? So what I might do is double click it like that. And then I may, for example, hold down the shift key. And we see that now comes into the modifier. And now I press the button again. So we've got joy 26, just like before. And OK, the reason it doesn't override the previous setting is because we've hold or we've held the shift key down as we've done. So clearly, if I don't hold the shift key down and just press the button, you see it overrides the original setting there and the control swaps over. Now, again, we don't want to use the keyboard modifiers. I'm just showing you that this is also possible. Let's now move over to using that flappy switch that I showed you previously in the video. If I just press the switch, you see by default, DCS wants me to use this as the wheel brakes for the Spitfire. But I don't want it to be that. I want it to be the quote unquote shift key. I'll use the pedals as the wheel brakes. But for now, let's just clear it out there. And let's come back to where we just were with the starter. 
I'm going to press the button now again at the lower side and there we go. So 26 on the throttle is going to be the starter button press. That's fine. But I also want it to open the cover just like before, but I don't want to have to let go of the HOTAS. I don't want to have to press anything on the keyboard. And the way that I'm going to do that is by setting up what's here called a modifier. So if we click on the modifiers button, first of all, let's have a look at the switches side of it because this is an on off type situation. So for example, if I press here on the add, I'm going to scroll down to my joystick here and I'm simply going to pull that lever now, the same one I was showing you in the video. And we see it's coming up as joy button four. And now we can rename it. Now you can leave it the same, but I find it really helpful to rename it. And I'm going to call it lever simply because it looks a little bit like a lever. And I'm going to press OK. OK. Scrolling back down now that we've set that modifier up in the switch, we see we've got the starter button just like before. 26 at the very bottom of my HOTAS there. But and here we've got the starter cover open close. So I'm going to double click on this one to set up the way that I want it. And I'm not just going to press the button because you see it's going to override it like before. But now I'm going to use control and shift. I'm now going to pull the lever. So watch what happens. Do you see what happens there? It says added modifiers lever. We're still using the same button here. 26. OK. And you see that? Just so that we're all know where we're talking about. Here is the starter cover in the Spitfire. So if I just press the starter switch now, you see it's not doing anything because the cover is in the way. If I just click on it with the mouse, that's what we need to happen. Remember, we've got this in as a switch. Now, what's a switch do? A switch is on off. That means you don't hold it down. You just press it once and it changes everything. So here we see I'm pressing the starter button and it's not doing anything. But if I pull this switch once, press and let go, that switch is now activated. Now, if I press the starter button, watch what happens. See the switch open? If I press it again, the switch closes. It opens and closes. So if we jump to the controls again, we can see why this is. Think of it much like two modes. In mode one, it's trying to press the starter button. In mode two, it's trying to do whatever we set up for the other thing, i.e. open and close the cover. And we're using the lever to switch between mode one and mode two back and forth. If I do want to press the button, I, what I would have to do is press this once, press this to open the cover, press it again. That now puts it back into the original mode. And now, you hear the Spitfire trying to start. Clearly, it's not going to because I've not done any of the procedure, but I hope that proves the point. Now, I originally tried to do it this way, but let me tell you, you will always forget, is this in mode one or mode two? Which way round is it? So having just shown that using this lever here as an on off switch is no good, we're going to go ahead and put that right and use it into what I believe is by far the most effective way. And let me tell you, I use this for every single one of the modules that I own all the time. So let's come back to the controls, just controls. If I come over to the modifiers section, see here where it says switches, I'm simply going to click on it and press remove. And instead, we're going to come over to the modifiers side and I'm going to press add. Come over to select the device, in this case, the joystick, because I need this to be the thing that does it and select modifier button. It's going to be the same lever we see there. It's coming up once again as joy button four. I'm going to delete joy button four and press lever. OK. Remember from last time, I still had that button at the bottom of my throttle hotas doing both things. So you see the two different things it's doing. And remember, you can do this for every single control button hat switch that you have on your entire hotas. And so, ladies and gentlemen, moment of truth. If I press the button, it does nothing. If I pull the lever, it does nothing. If I pull the lever and let go and then press the button, it does nothing. But if I pull the lever, then press the button and let go, then press the button again. Ta-da! And you can do this for every single button on all of your controls, whether it's on the HOTAS, the joystick, whether it's on your Cougars. Do you know what I use it for? I only have two Cougars because they come in packs of two. If there's a third screen, like for instance on the F18, guess how I control that middle one with only two of these? That's right. I have one for the left screen, one for the right screen. And if I pull this lever down here, 
and press the button it controls the third screen okay let's have a little recap there i know there was an awful lot of word salad so to begin with let's have a look we press the button by itself we're not pressing the lever here we get the first action this is normal yeah you press the button for example the gear goes up and down if we then press the lever by itself but without pressing any button it's pointless it does absolutely nothing but if we hold the lever down and then press the button the exact same one in this case joystick button one we get a second action instead of the first action which was the gear up down the second action is in this case toggling landing lights on and off and clearly if we then let go of the lever again and then just press that same button again we go back to the first action in other words gear up and down so i hope that makes sense and remember you can do this for every single button that you have on your whole task thank you very much for staying until the end i really hope you found this one useful if you did ensure you leave a like i think it's important lots of people find out about this and until next time wherever in the world you may be good morning good afternoon good evening and good night